Okay, so here's the second video uh, on the Ghanaian economy. We've been through the extract data, and uh, let's look at uh, the first of three synoptic style questions. This one is about micro and macro factors limiting development. And here's the question, using the data and your own knowledge, assess one micro and one macro factor that might limit economic development in Ghana. It was quite a bit of data that we went through in the previous video. I've just highlighted for you extract four, which draws on a lot of the data from the Human Development Index. There's a lot here, very useful data to get a, get a picture for where Ghana is in their development progress. The 138th out of 189 nations, with a per capita income of $5,000 plus, they should be actually a little higher on HDI. So clearly there's, there's some progress to make and growth and development are often limited by certain factors. Now, again, in the exam, you just have to think of one main macro factor that limits development. So again, think of households, think of businesses, think of industries. I My instinct here is to go for the human aspect of this. So what are the main micro factors? Well, one is the fact that uh, not everybody has um, access to electricity, reliable and cost affordable electricity. Something like 16% don't have it in Ghana. Of course, limited access to electricity in the, in the industry reduces access to key services, including connectivity and including things like the ability to charge household durables and mobile phones. The high cost of electricity, in addition to the intermittent reliability, reduces real incomes. So if you can, uh, you know, that, that's clearly a barrier to development. On the valuation side, there is a lot of FDI coming into Ghana, 4.5% of GDP we were given in extract four, I think. So a lot of that investment might well be investment in infrastructure, in, in power, in transportation, in telecoms. So if Ghana can attract FDI into their economy, then that could help address that micro factor. A big factor, a big constraint holding back development is the very high rate of child malnutrition, 18% according to the data. And malnutrition uh, impairs brain development, synoptic development of the brain amongst young people. You have stunted growth effects, and that can have long-term productivity effects across the whole economy, but also in particular industries. And of course, productivity, if it's low, uh, malnutrition can, can reduce household incomes per capita and, uh, and increase the risk of, of uh, sustained, embedded, persistent poverty. Valuation point, I guess, is that Ghana is successfully attracting a lot of inward remittances, over 5% of GDP. That flows directly to families and may help to address the issue, providing the money is used to improve nutrition. Uh, the data we saw, there was a big gap between expected and mean years of schooling in Ghana. Expected years of schooling, something like 11, 11 and a half years. For males, they end up getting eight, eight and a half, whereas for females, it's six, six and a half. So a big gap. And clearly that then has a damaging effect, a limiting effect on people's human capital, skills, knowledge, uh, experience. And that uh, has a micro effect for individual households. It limits their income. It also actually has a wider effect in terms of holding back economic diversification. You need to upskill and reskill and increase the skills of, of, the, of young people in particular. Evaluation point is that, again, remittances might help to address this point. So remittances coming in can maybe help a family educate the second or the third child. Oftentimes, they don't have the resources to be able to do that. We're getting the emergence of fintech companies, the mobile money companies, and they may well offer better training to workers. On the macro side, this is probably a fairly straightforward question. There are often many, many factors holding back development. And I guess primary product dependency, which is the focus of, of extract one, would be maybe a, maybe a macro factor. The high percentage of Ghanaian exports are precious metals, crude oil and cocoa. And there is a risk of, of a fall in the real price of these things. Not always, of course. I mean, the prices of lots of foodstuffs are going up at the moment globally. But if prices go down in real terms or if prices are volatile, that leads to volatile incomes. Cocoa farmers, as we know, only get 7% of the global co cocoa chocolate industry. So that up against the, the monopsony power of transnational corporations. And of course, if you're highly dependent on primary products, that makes your economy vulnerable to external shocks, including things like recessions, pandemics, civil war and other factors. On the evaluation side, link to the link to the intervention by the Ghanaian and the Ivory Coast governments. They brought in this living 
income differential scheme? To what extent might that be a factor increasing, on average, the prices that cocoa farmers get? And there's some evidence, obviously, in the fintech sector that Ghana is, is changing structurally, that there's now more uh, mobile money companies, we're moving more into financial services, tourism and light manufacturing, etc. One of the other factors limiting development in, in Ghana is the, the low tax revenues as a share of GDP, something like only 12% of GDP is taxed. And of course, if the government has a limited tax revenue, that uh, means that they have fewer resources, fiscal resources, to provide essential public and merit goods like education and healthcare and housing. So you can link that back to HDI and then link that back to, to development and growth. However, one of the aims of the new e-levy is to broaden the tax base, to widen the base of taxation and increase the size of the formal economy. Ghana has a relatively high income inequality level. The Gini coefficient is 43.5. Anything above 40 is high. And so you could talk about that as a barrier to development. The benefits of growth are unevenly skewed. If you have something like the top 1% earn 15% of the income in Ghana, that was some data we, we looked at. So that very wide dispersion or skew in incomes can hold back consumption. You see, if the vast majority of people are relatively poor, that means they have limited consumption spending. If you could raise their incomes by a, a few thousand dollars per capita, that would have a huge effect on consumer spending because they have a higher propensity to spend, and then that would drive investment, whereas limited consumption holds back investment. But then the evaluation, again, the attempts by Ghana to lift farm incomes, provide a living income differential, and uh, that research about mobile money lifting per capita incomes. Again, potential there for Ghana to increase their per capita incomes and hopefully, over time, uh, reduce the level of income inequality. In the next video, we'll walk through a question on the micro and macro impact of the new e-levy in Ghana.